like, subscribe, do all that, you know what time it is, it's Netflix time, this movie's called Oh Boy. Now I have the original movie that took place in 2003, classic right here. Ten years later, Spike Lee did his own adaptation of this movie. So is it living up to the hype? We gonna find out. Spoiler alert, let's get it. So we got this guy here by the name of Joe Duche. He's pretty much an alcoholic salesman who was honestly terrible at his job. And his boss comes up to him and he needs to close this big case. And if he doesn't, he's fired. Then he gets on the phone with his ex-wife Donna. And she's telling him to be here for his three-month-old daughter. Three years old, my bad. So he hasn't seen his daughter like that or his ex-wife because he's been working. He basically comes off as a prick, honestly. So I guess he sells cars or something like that. And he impresses this couple at first. Hey, I remember him from The Wire. If you know The Wire, that's some B-more shit right there, dog. Representing. So basically he had the deal closed, everything was all good and gravy, while this random chick is staring at him. Who was that? Well he almost had his sign still delivered, but then all of a sudden he makes a pass at Judy. But that's not the vibe she's giving off, and in fact she thinks he's a fucking idiot for this point. And he comes back from the bathroom and he knew it the whole time. No deal for you Joe, you damn dubby. Now why would you fuck your own deal? It makes no sense. After that he basically gets drunk. He ends up going to his spot paying $5 for his rubber ducky so he can give to his daughter. He goes by this tavern where his best friend Chucky stays at. Chucky's like we closed man, I ain't letting you in. Then he sees his lady with the umbrella, the same lady that he saw in the bar, with a bunch of blood tablet markings on it. Chucky's about to close up the bar, he goes back out to check outside. Next thing he sees the rubber ducky sitting out in front of the door, and Joe's pretty much gone. Next thing we see Joe's locked up in his random room. We assume the girl that was with him is in the shower, because the water was running. When he pulls back the curtain, nobody's there. He goes to the room door, but he's locked in from the inside out. He can't get out whatsoever. He gets food from there every day, but for the most part, he's pretty much stuck there. So basically, the lady he was with kidnapped them and sent them here. They give him food and vodka. Now the question is, why did this lady kidnap him? Later on, we see him watching these exercise videos, basically jerking off to the lady on TV, and all of a sudden, gas fills up the room so he could be knocked out. Apparently, this happens to him every day. Later on, he turns on the news and he finds out that Donna was actually killed, and he had to take his daughter Mia up out of there. And the news is assuming that Joe was the one that actually killed his wife. I'm like, the fuck? So now we're really wondering who really killed his ex-wife and why is he being framed for it? And more importantly, who kidnapped him in the first place? Was it the chick? Does she work for somebody else? What's the deal? He's pretty much cracked as there's a crack in the wall and he makes friends with a rat or a mouse. The mouse ended up having babies. Don't ask me how because there was only one mouse in there, but whatever. When he was put to sleep again, the mouse and the babies were gone. He gets his dinner this time, but this time it's in a metal container. None of his stuff was ever in a metal container before, so what could it be? Oh damn, they cooked up the mouse and the babies. What kind of sadistic fuckers kidnapped this man? Then he got to a point where he broke the mirror and used the glass to almost kill himself. Next thing you know, he wakes up with his hair cut and shaved face. Then he happens to look around the room and sees a camera, but who's staring at him? What the heck is this, Samuel Jackson? Is he the one behind the operation? Finally, he's been in here for a while now, and he's watching a show called Mysteries of Crime. And he finds out these two random parents adopted Mia. And Joe learns that she's been learning how to play the cello. So he's been writing all these letters to Mia just in case he ever gets out of there, trying to make amends for all the time that's been lost. He's been exercising now, getting himself in shape. He stops drinking and dumps all the vodka out in the toilet when they give it to him. He takes his pen out and puts it in the furnace so he can mark the days on his arm or how many days he's been there. Or weeks or months, who the heck knows. He learns that Barack Obama's been the president, so it's like, damn, how many years has he been in there? Well, he's trying to make a way out by removing bricks from the bathroom, we realize that he's been in this room for over 20 years. What in all of these fuck? Who would kidnap this guy for this long? He dug himself a full-fledged tunnel, which led to a furnace, which he realized he's on the top floor. There's no way he can get down. But he's packing up all his letters that he wants to send to Mia, thinking to himself he's going to find a way to get the fuck out of here. Next thing we know, the gas hits again, he's completely knocked out. Then all of a sudden, we see a box in the middle of nowhere, and he was in the trunk. He's got his letters. They gave him some money and a phone. Then he ends up seeing the lady with the umbrella again, and the chase is on. And he runs into some football jocks, and then he saved the lady, and he's like, hey, leave the lady alone. He ends up beating the shit out of all these dudes, then going about his business. He ends up chasing the lady again, come to find out some random dude holding the umbrella. So the lady escaped. Then this nurse named Marie Sebastian steps in to stop the fight. Apparently, she's helping out all these patients in line. Joe doesn't really give her a whole lot of information, but Marie gives her a number just in case. To call just in case he needs help. Then Joe ends up going to a familiar spot. He goes to see Chucky, somebody he hasn't seen in 20 years. He gets a call from an anonymous guy, tells about accepting choices and consequences and all that. And apparently this is the dude that had him locked up for 20 years. But who is he? It don't sound like Samuel Jackson over the phone, so it must be somebody else. So basically while he was in there, Joe made this list of people that could have did this to him. Now this list of people had to be clients of Joe's, people that probably hated him over the years. So the guy Daniel and this couple, they ended up dying in a plane crash. About five years ago. They're going to listen to this other guy who happens to be at like a senior citizen club. Apparently the guy there was his former boss. Later on he goes through the whole list and really can't find nothing of evidence. Later on he just collapses of dehydration and whatnot and poor nourishment. I guess the food they was feeding him was some bullshit. He calls the number that was left in his pocket, it was the number for Marie Sebastian. And she comes by to help out Joe, meanwhile Chucky's about to open a bar. While he's knocked out, Marie starts reading through the letters. Just being nosy reading through all them shits. But Marie doesn't do anything drastic when Joe wakes up. She actually identifies with his story somewhat. 
Then she actually helps him get to his old boss. He got the razor blade out. He about to do some massacring. But his boss is clearly in no shape to do anything terrible to him. So he's like, all right, let's cross that off the list. Then she helps him figure out this Chinese restaurant. Well, why is that? Because he thinks there's a clue in a restaurant. Because he remembers the texture and the smell of dumplings he's been fed for the last 20 years. He goes to a bunch of restaurants about a texture of his face. He lands at the right one. Then he sees this guy that made a huge order. Gets a hammer, get a delivery bike, and follows the guy. They end up going inside this little warehouse. And he gets these niggas duffed. Goes up the elevator and gets another nigga duffed. Ends up being in the same area where Samuel Jackson is revising. How the hell did Joe notice? Apparently he's smart, I guess. Either that or lucky as fuck. He gets to Samuel Jackson, he tortures the shit out of him. Samuel's not telling him no names or nothing, so Joe starts cutting off pieces of his flesh. Then he starts throwing salt in the wounds, god damn. But before he finishes them off, Samuel tells him there are tapes in the locker room. Joe Duche tapes. He listens to one of the tapes and the guy is talking to Samuel Jackson. A mystery man. And he's the one that set the whole thing up. So his job is basically just to keep, just keep people there. But he was paid a good amount of money to keep Joe there for 20 years. But now he's got the info. Samuel Jackson niggas is on alert. So now Joe gotta get the fuck up out of there. And then we get the fight scene. Which if you ever saw the original one in 2003 was the biggest part of what most people remember about the movie. It was a pretty decent fight scene, but if you've seen the older one 10 years ago, then yeah. So anyway, he's fucking up a whole bunch of niggas, and then comes some more ready to do something, but he ends up giving him the business too. But not without going back to Chucky and being badly injured. Meanwhile, Maurice doing some digging, and she finds out Joe is a suspect for murder. But now she knows the whole story. Does she believe it? Because she looked at the letters, and I don't think she does. She doesn't tell Joe what she finds, but she really does believe that fact that he was framed. He tells her to leave because he ain't no good for her. Reluctantly, though, she leaves. Joe's back at the bar and he gets a phone call. But the guy he's making a phone call to is actually in the same bar. Oh shit, that's the chick he's been looking for. That's the guy with the accent that's been picking up the phone, but who is he? Basically, the girl subdues him and has him take a seat. So basically, this guy's been a mastermind the whole time. He tells him he has his daughter. He needs him to answer two questions in a matter of 46 hours. Question one, try to figure out who I am and why I had you locked up for 20 years. Failure to do so, he and his daughter dies. If he gets outside help like the police, same result. He's got 46 hours to figure this stuff out. And he shows him a tape. The fucked up thing is he's actually the one that killed his wife Donna. And violated her in the process. I'm like, god damn. If he answers both these questions correctly within a state of 46 hours, he'll get his daughter back. And he will give him $20 million in diamonds. And this dude said he would also kill himself. If he's really going by his words, then this guy's fucking crazy. And on top of that, his goons got Maria too. Ready to rape and kill her. I'm like, god damn. So afterward, the first thing he does goes straight to Marie, and he gets jumped by goons. They end up being Samuel's goons. So basically, he's about to torture him, but right before he does it, his crazy-ass employer calls him and tells him to back off. Sam is not willing to do that until he gets a bag from the door. And it's got cash in it, and they're like, all right, we good. So after that, they just let Joe go. Meanwhile, crazy guy's chilling back at his palace, and he's got cameras set up in the house. Joe swears he's seen this guy before. He looks familiar to him, and he's trying to figure out where the music comes from from his ringtone. Marie looks it up on her phone. It's a theme song to a school called Evergreen Academy, which is actually a school Joe used to go to when he was younger. So here's Marie goes by this lady's house that used to be a teacher there. And while they on the couch talking, Joe snuck in and grabbed one of the yearbooks. They go back to this cabinet that they have and they find out this one guy in there is named Adrian. Adrian Price. Chucky looks up the guy Adrian Price and we find out Adrian Price is actually the employer of Samuel Jackson's guy. He's the crazy motherfucker that killed Joe's ex-wife Donna. So you think of this, there's gotta be a grudge somewhere. Why would this guy that used to go to his school go through all this to fuck with Joe? After Maria took care of some of the wounds that he had on his back, she ended up kissing her and he ended up giving her business. The crazy thing is this guy Adrian had access to everything. This motherfucker has a camera in that cabin too. How the fuck is this guy so well connected? Well, Chucky ended up doing some more digging. He found out that Adrian's actually a billionaire and he funded a hospital in memory of his sister. Chucky then calls Joe to try to tell him the situation. But as he's leaving a message to Joe, we found out that Adrian was tapping the phone the entire time. So he heard all this shit. Well, now he know he's got so many connections. This motherfucker's a billionaire. Do whatever he wanted at this point, right? So Adrian goes to see Chucky face to face. And he ends up killing Chucky right then and there. Chucky done deal dead as shit. Meanwhile, Joe and Marie go back to Evergreen Academy so they get the information out of there. And they go through files and they find out that Adrian's sister is named Amanda. Then we get some backstory. So apparently back then, Joe used to pick on Amanda. And we found out Chucky actually went to the same school too, along with Adrian. So one night, Joe was by the greenhouse ready to get drunk again. And he hears noises coming from the greenhouse. But what he sees? She's Amanda smashing one of the teachers like, oh shit. But the crazy thing is, this is not a teacher. She's actually fucking her father. What kind of sweet home Alabama incest bullshit is this? And so again, what in all of these fuck? So apparently some word got around that everybody in the family died except for Adrian. And we know Adrian's still alive, but at that time, they thought he was dead too. So the father's name is Arthur. And apparently Joe was the one that spread the gossip back then about the information of all this shit going down. So when they go back to the car, they find a green box sitting there. They open a box and it's Chucky's fucking tongue. Holy shit. So at this point, they get back to the cab and he tells Marie to stay here. She doesn't want him to go, but he's trying to get his daughter back. He ain't got a choice. So he ready to go murk some niggas. He gets the address at his time. Face to face Joe with Adrian. Shorty steps up to give Joe the business, but Joe ends up cutting her with the razor blade and she's done deal dead as shit. All right, so you ready for this wild shit? Boy.
So he answers both questions correctly. He gives him the $20 million in diamonds. Then Adrian tells him the real story about what happened. See, after what his father did to his sister, they moved to Luxembourg. I guess changed their names. One day he just went on a rampage and killed Amanda, killed his wife, shot Adrian. That's why he had that crazy ass scar on the left side of his chest. Damn, that shit looks sick. Then his father ends up dozing himself in. Like, holy shit. Obviously, he survived it, but that's just crazy. So while he's taking him to Mia, he asks him one important question. He says to Joe, you never asked me why I let you go in the first place. Joe doesn't respond as he takes him down to the basement. And he tells him that he was behind the scenes. He actually made the show series of crime. Mysteries of crime, my bad. He said the only viewer he had was Joe, so he set that whole show for him to watch it. He has the exact setup down there and everything. This shit is crazy. But it's about to get even more ridiculous. He finally takes him to his daughter Maria, I mean Mia, and she's all bruised up playing the cello like it ain't shit. Come to find out, that's not even really Joe's daughter at all. The girl was actors, the parents were actors. She's some chick named Ashley, and on top of that, the bruise on her face is just all makeup. So now Joe's gotta be thinking to himself at this point, where the fuck is his daughter? Then Adrian tells him the reason why he let him go, and this is gonna fuck you up. Adrian was taking care of this little girl to groom her and change her records. This little girl he's been grooming up is actually Marie Sebastian. Marie Sebastian is really Joe's daughter. What the fuck? Basically, she's Mia Duche. Again, what are these fuck? All Adrian wanted to do was know the pain and anguish of smashing your own family members. Unknowingly, she made Joe, he made Joe do that. What the fuck? She also had trouble in the past drinking just like Joe and other chemicals and stuff. But that's besides the point. At this point, Joe was so distraught, he was supposed to kill himself. So Adrian pulls out a gun. You think he's going to do it. But then Adrian grants Joe his wish from earlier and blows out the back of his fucking head. Adrian's dud deal dead as shit. So at this point, I guess he still had the duck. He ends up tossing it in the trash. Oh no, I thought he actually put it in a box. And basically, he leaves out of her life for good forever. I guess that's his way of punishing himself. Last thing we see is Mia driving with the rubber ducky in front of the car. As for Joe, he goes back to Samuel Jackson, gives him the $20 million in diamonds. Well, he gave him most of it, gave $5 million to Maria. Mia. He burnt all the letters he made, and he confined himself back to the room that he broke out of to begin with. The end. I don't even know what to say about this version. It's a different turn from the original, but okay. I'm just fucking speechless at this point. Oh boy, Netflix, check it out. I like this, I do all that. You already know what time it is. Easy, 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 miss. Ah, this is a good Big, you gotta get slow.